Hello everyone, I'm Nassif John. Welcome to the first part of the Analytical Chemistry Review Session for the Chemical Technician Licensure Examination. For today's session, we will review the following topics. Units of measurement, conversion of units, scientific method, significant figures, scientific notation, accuracy and precision, the periodic table, and the periodic properties of the elements. Let's start with this question. Which of the following is the SI base unit for temperature? The answer here is letter C, Kelvin. According to the table of the seven SI base units, for the physical quantity temperature, the SI base unit is Kelvin. Number two, how many centimeters are in a meter? The answer here is letter D, 100. According to this table of the most commonly used conversion factors, 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Number 3. Which of the following measurements is incorrectly labeled? The answer here is letter E, none of the above. Here's a table of the prefixes used with SI units. It is very obvious that letters A, B, and C are all correctly labeled. Letter D is a little tricky. 2.25 times 10 to the negative 3 milliliters is equal to 2.25 microliters. If we substitute 10 to the negative 3 to the prefix milli, 2.25 times 10 to the negative 3 milliliters would become 2.25 times 10 to the negative 6 liters. 10 to the negative 6 corresponds to the prefix micro. So, 2.25 times 10 to the negative 6 liters is equal to 2.25 microliters. This means that letter D is also correctly labeled. That's why the answer here is letter E. Number 4. Which of the indicated number of significant figures is incorrect? The answer here is letter D. The correct number of significant figures in 700.3 should be indicated as 4. According to rule number 1, the digits 7 and 3 here are significant because these are non-zero digits. The two zeros between 7 and 3 are also significant because according to rule number 3, embedded zeros are always significant. Number 5, 3.4 times 10 to the negative 3 milligrams is equal to blank micrograms. The answer here is letter D, 3.4. This problem wants us to convert 3.4 times 10 to the negative 3 milligrams to micrograms. Here's the solution. If we substitute 10 to the negative 3 to the prefix milli, 3.4 times 10 to the negative 3 milligrams would become 3.4 times 10 to the negative 6 grams. We can now use dimensional analysis to convert the unit gram to microgram. The conversion factor needed here is 1 microgram equals 1 times 10 to the negative 6 gram. Because the unit gram is at the top, we write 1 times 10 to the negative 6 gram in the denominator to cancel out the unit gram. Then we write 1 microgram in the numerator. The answer here is 3.4 micrograms. Number 6. Complete the statement. If the hypothesis is inconsistent with the experimental results, you should blank. The answer here is letter B. If the hypothesis is inconsistent with experimental results, it must be revised or discarded if necessary. Number 7. A laboratory analyst conducts an experiment to determine how temperature affects the vitamin C content in citrus fruits. In this experiment, which of the following is the independent variable? The answer here is letter B. In a scientific measurement, there are two types of variables, the independent variable and the dependent variable. The independent variable is the one that is changed or controlled in an experiment and is assumed to have a direct effect on the dependent variable. On the other hand, the dependent variable is the one that is tested or measured in an experiment and is dependent on the independent variable. In this experiment, the independent variable is the temperature while the dependent variable is the vitamin C content in citrus fruits. Number 8. 
Ethanol has a boiling point of 173 degrees Fahrenheit. What is this temperature in degrees Celsius? The answer here is letter A, 78.3. These are the two formulas that you need to remember when converting units of temperature. The first formula is used when converting degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. The second formula is used when converting degrees Celsius to Kelvin. If you want to convert degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, just derive the first formula to get the formula for degrees Celsius. If you want to convert Kelvin to degrees Celsius, just derive the second formula to get the formula for degrees Celsius. In this problem, we want to convert 173 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, so we will use the formula degrees Celsius equals degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 over 1.8. Here's the solution. The answer here is 78.3 degrees Celsius. Number 9. A temperature of 246 Kelvin is equal to blank degrees Fahrenheit. The answer here is letter B, negative 17. In this problem, we want to convert Kelvin to degrees Fahrenheit. To do this, we must first convert Kelvin to degrees Celsius, then convert degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. These are the formulas that we need to use. Here's the solution. As you can see, the final answer is negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit. Number 10. Express 0 0.0009047 in scientific notation to three significant figures. The answer here is letter A, 9.05 times 10 to the negative 4. In scientific notation, a number is written as n times 10 to the power of x. The coefficient n is a number that is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. The exponent x can be any positive or negative whole number. Here, we have 0 0.0009047. If we move the decimal point 4 places to the right, this number would be expressed in scientific notation as 9.047 times 10 to the negative 4. If you round this number to three significant figures, this would become 9.05 times 10 to the negative 4. Number 11. The quotient of the following operations has blank significant figures and is correctly written in scientific notation as blank. 70.75 meters times 58.25 meters all over 1.50 meters. The answer here is letter C. Here's the solution. 70.75 meters times 58.25 meters all over 1.50 meters is equal to 2,747.458333 meters. Because the operations involve multiplication and division, we need to consider the rules for significant figures. The rule states that we need to round the product or quotient to the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the fewest number of significant figures. 70.75 meters and 58.25 meters both have four significant figures, while 1.50 meters has only three significant figures. The fewest number of significant figures is therefore three, so we need to round the answer to three significant figures. By rounding, this answer would become 2,750 meters. If we move the decimal point three places to the left, this number would be expressed in scientific notation as 2.75 times 10 to the power of 3 meters. Number 12. Which set of measurements on a 25.0 gram standard has a high accuracy and high precision? The answer here is letter C. To determine which of these sets of measurements have high accuracy, we need to calculate their average values. If a set of measurements has high accuracy, its average should be close to the correct or true value. The correct value here is the standard value 25.0 grams. Because the averages of A and B are not close to 25.0, we can eliminate A and B from our choices. Notice that both letters C and D have high accuracy. 
To determine which of these sets of measurements have high precision, we need to check how close the individual measurements are to each other. If a set of measurements has high precision, the individual measurements should be close to each other. If we try to look at letter C, the individual measurements are very close to each other, therefore it has high precision. Letter D cannot be the answer because it has a low precision. Its individual measurements are far from each other. Number 13. Which of the following pairs of elements consists of non-metals belonging to the same period? The answer here is letter E, carbon and oxygen. In order to answer this question, we need to look at the periodic table. As you can see here, those elements located to the left side of the metalloids are metals, while those elements located to the right side of the metalloids are non-metals. In this problem, we're only concerned with non-metals. We can eliminate letters A, C, and D because these choices include at least one metal element. Now we're left with letters B and E. In the periodic table, the rows indicate periods, while the columns indicate groups. Letter B cannot be the correct answer because CL and BR belong to the same group. Letter E is the only correct answer because carbon and oxygen belong to the same period. Number 14. Which of the following elements is an alkali metal? The answer here is letter E, rubidium. All group 1A elements except hydrogen are alkali metals. Number 15. Arrange the following atoms and ions in order of decreasing radius, Mg2+, Ca2+, Ba, and Ca. The answer here is letter A. We need to look at the periodic table to answer this problem. For atomic radius, these are the important trends. As we move from left to right across a period, the atomic radius generally decreases. And as we move from top to bottom down a group, the atomic radius generally increases. Because barium and calcium are in the same group, we expect barium to be larger than calcium. Because calcium is below magnesium in group 2A, Ca2 plus is larger than Mg2 plus. Because cations are smaller than their parent atoms, Ca is larger than Ca2 plus. Consequently, Ba is larger than Ca is larger than Ca2 plus is larger than Mg2 plus. Number 16. Arrange the following atoms and ions in order of decreasing radius. I minus, F minus, F and Br minus. The answer here is letter A. In the periodic table, these are the trends for atomic radius. Because fluorine, bromine, and iodine are in the same group, we expect that I minus is larger than Br minus and Br minus is larger than F minus. Because anions are larger than their parent atoms, F minus is larger than F. Consequently, I minus is larger than Br minus is larger than F minus is larger than F. Number 17. Arrange the following elements in order of increasing first ionization energy. Si, Cl, Al, and Ar. The answer here is letter C. In the periodic table, these are the trends for the first ionization energy. As we move from left to right across a period, the first ionization energy generally increases. And as we move from top to bottom down a group, the first ionization energy generally decreases. Because Al, Si, Cl, and Ar belong to the same period, we expect that the first ionization energy will follow this order. Al is less than Si is less than Cl is less than Ar. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this review session, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more updates. If you want to review some chemistry topics, just click these videos here. Have a great day!